I'm Owen O'Reilly of City Colleges and you're very welcome to my short videos on the content of SBL, Strategic Business Leader. Let's uh, bring it in here if I could and I can show you that today I want to bring you down to some of the areas on the external environment. Uh, but one in particular, Pestel. It's an easy area but it's a good example of how you need to have good exam technique to score in the exam. Okay, let me try and show you. Yeah. So the area that we're looking at here is Pestel. So you can see here that we're in the uh, uh, we're in the um, let me just bring it out here if I could here. Uh, I'm in the uh, Pestel, I'm in the external environment, excuse me, chapter four. And you can see here, one of the areas here on the syllabus is Pestel. You've probably done it before, maybe if you've already done a, uh, a degree or something in business studies, Pestel is one of those models that they use all the time. Yeah. And you can see here in the BPP books that we use, they're very good. They're to the point. And you can see here this uh, Pestel, the macro environment. So the macro environment is what's happening. It's like the clouds. It's, uh, it's, it's affecting everybody. So a recession, for example, is affecting everybody. It's not just in your industry. Does that make sense? OK. And if I can just bring it up here, there's a whole load of stuff here on the BPP books. And honestly, my job is to try and make the course as simple as possible. So oftentimes I'll be saying to you, don't worry about that. Just focus here on what you need to know. Right. And this is the area here that you need to know for PESTEL. So you're familiar with the acronym PESTEL. It's uh, they stand for something each of the parts. So what is it? you got political, economic, social, technological, environmental and legal. It used to be known as PEST and then they envi put environmental and legal in. Now, so these are headings. And the difficulty here is that students sometimes use these headings and they start off with P for political and so on. Yeah. And that's true. Right. That is one way of doing an answer for Pestel. But honestly, you need to be careful because you need to uh, show some sort of priority in your points. If you were writing a report for your boss, for example, you would make sure that you would tell your boss the most important things first. Isn't that true? So for your SPL, make sure that the first points you're making are the major points. OK, well, I'm going to try and show you this here uh, in the context of student answers. One of the things that we try to do here at City Colleges is we use other students, previous students, their answers with their permission to try and illustrate the points. And honestly, students find this very, very useful because they can relate to peer work better than the work in the back of the BPP kit, which is done by an examiner or based on an examiner's answer. So it's not that it's good for teaching, but it's not that relevant for, oh, that's what I would be able to do in an exam. OK, come, help me out here. So I'm going to try and show you here, if I can, I'm going to show you that in the progress ladder, we talked about the progress ladder. So I have a mock here that we're doing uh, for the progress ladder. Step four on the progress ladder, we do the specimen exam one DCS. So I'll have it up on the Moodle. It's not in the new BPP kit. That's OK. Uh, you can see here. So specimen exam one or DCS. So I'm going to show it to you. And in that case, I added in an extra question. Right. So for the BPP one, they started with an analysis there of the industry. But I added in this one here to make sure that students were ready for a pastel or analyze the macro environment of DCS. And of course, that was lucky because, as it turns out, it came up in the March 2019 exam and I'm pretty sure our students were very well prepared for it. Well, let's just concentrate here, Owen, if we could. There's eight marks going. So how many points should I come up with? Well, for a model like Pestel, you need to make sure that you're getting one point for each of the marks available. So the examiner will be thinking, oh, I'd, look, I'd like to see eight discrete points here. OK, does that make sense? Now, I also want to make you aware that there is a, a slant in the answer. I need you to make sure that you're saying, OK, oh, and those professional skills marks. Do you remember those guys? Commercial acumen. Oops. Very important. Do you remember I did a we did a uh, short introduction to the professional skills, each professional skills. What was the thing that we said? If you wanted to score the professional skills marks for commercial acumen, there was two things. You, that's right. You've got it. Number one, we said you needed to make every point slant towards what were the three things. Perfect. 
you slant it towards your revenues, costs and margins. Brilliant. And the second thing that we said, you needed to make sure that your points had a uh, an emphasis on the priorities. Yeah. So in commercial acumen, there's no point talking about uh, small stuff. You need to talk about the big stuff first with your client. Isn't that true? Yeah, that makes sense. So there was two things. So in other words, every point that I make here, I need to slant it towards commercial acumen. OK, well done. And you can see here that there's a further two marks or 20 percent of the marks available here for those professional skills marks. Oh, and try and show me what you mean. Well, OK, so here's some student answers. Right. And you can see here that this uh, person here actually is doing it on a slightly different uh, uh, um, version of this case. And they're doing out a plan, first of all. And my advice to you is not to do a plan out like this. I'm trying to communicate here to the uh, students. If you do out a big plan like this, you're, you're wasting a lot of time. And during the course, I'll try and show you that you will do out your plan over the full uh, detail of uh, doing this particular um, um, question, right? And then you'll fill in the answers. Let me see if I can make this a little bit better for you here. Here is a, uh, a person writing the answer. So it's a report. Let's just go back in and try and show that idea here. What did it say? It says, uh, from the information, uh, draft a section of a consultancy report. Do you see that idea? So I need to do it in the context of doing a report. Let me just bring it back in here if I could. And you guys can see. So this student here, you need to do so to, from, date and regarding. OK, so you need the report format. Now, let's keep going on. These guys do it and uh, know it. A macro environmental analysis. So fair enough. That was the uh, the requirement. And now they're going to do a pastel. Fair enough. And so the student is kind of falling into that trap of doing political first. Yeah. OK. Um, all right. Uh, let, 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 let's keep going here and say if you're doing it, you're going to not fall into that. What you're going to do is that you're going to make sure that you do the priority. Yeah. The priority for DCS here is bang in there. Does that make sense? Yeah, it does. Now, the next thing that I need to show you here is yeah, let's, let's just go down through it here. Uh, there's two words that you need in, in your answer. Right. So if you're doing a pastel analysis, there's only two words. Uh, that must be in your answer, right? So it's either threat or, do you know the other one? You do? Okay, opportunity. Great, you do know it. So in other words, you've got, so if you're doing a macro analysis for, so and again, think of it in the context of your work. Imagine your boss comes down and says, do a macro analysis of, uh, of a certain company we're thinking of acquiring or our own company or a client company. And you'd say, oh, yeah, I know how to do that. I'm just going to pull out the Pestel model and use it to structure ideas around giving thoughts on a report to do with the uh, macro environment. So Pestel. So let's see what your colleague wrote here. DCS has a headquarters in a stable political system. This means now I love that phrase. This means I absolutely adore it because it means that whatever you're going to say next is pretty certainly going to be a scoring mark. Right. DCS has an opportunity for long term planning and development. Okay, that's good. Nice and simple. But I don't think this is the priority point. Saying that the environment is politically stable isn't the key point for this particular company. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's continue on here if we could. But aha, they do have the word opportunity in there. Right. That's good. Yeah. So either threat or opportunity. Make sure that you're using those in every single point. Let's, let's let's go on here if we could. And I'm going to skip uh, that one here. Technological. There's some other points that they're making. Environmental. OK, so again, all the words that I'm looking for here are there's the word uh, this means and threat and whatever you say next. So you have to if you say it's a threat, what's the next word that's always going to come? Because. Yeah. Or it's an opportunity. What's the next word that's always going to come? Because you're going to justify your point. If you're justifying your point, do you think that your boss or the client are happy with you? They are. Yeah. Or in this case, the examiner. Right. OK, let's keep going on. This has it. So what does it say here? It says uh, I'm going to bring up another one here if I could, just so we can keep going here, Owen. Um, and maybe uh, there's a few of them here. Let me just see if I can uh, get the one that uh, I'm trying to get to. Oh, oh, it's not gone a little bit far there. Let me come back here. So it's again political. Another one of your clients, uh, another one of your colleagues. Political DCS is in a stable and well-established political. This means that DCS has the opportunity to plan for the long term. And so this is a mark, right? 
Okay, I'm not sure if you've really contributed to the professional skills mark because commercial acumen is not a priority. Yeah. Okay. Um, and as well, let's keep going on. Uh, legal. There is a highly developed labour laws, and um, there's a minimum wage. Okay. So, in other words, labour laws and minimum wage. Okay. Let's see what it says. This is a threat. Okay. Now. Again, this is something that I need you to really think about. Very, just have a look down here. So your colleague has put in something, uh, yada, 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 right? But actually, you've got to be careful here. So this is a threat. Um, and what's the next word? A threat because, yeah, um, cost base relative to international rivals will be higher or it will add to our cost base relative to international rivals. What did I just do there? I slanted my answer to the professional skills mark. What's the professional skills mark in this case? Commercial acumen. How do I score the, the uh, commercial acumen marks? I related to costs, revenues and margins. Do you see that? Yeah. So it's very important that you see that if you could please. And then let's just do one more here. I, I think you have it already here. It's uh, legal. There's a, a suggestion in the case that there's going to be an obligatory contribution to some pension scheme. Right. OK, so if I have to make an obligatory contribution to a pension scheme, that's easy for me to say. It says here that uh, this is a threat. I like it. What's the next word? I'd like it to be because DCS and again, our cost base relative to rivals will be higher. International rivals. Does that make sense? OK, you have it. Now, let me just see if there are any other points here. Very important point to finish here. I need to make sure that you've really thought about this. Right. So what have we looked at this uh, in this class? We've looked at doing a macro uh, environmental analysis. What model did we say? Oh, Pestel. What did we say were the two words that you needed to have? Threat or opportunity. What's the next word that you must have after you say threat or opportunity? Because. Now you justify your point and you slant all the points towards the professional skills. In this case, it was commercial acumen. But there's one final point that I need to make sure that you've seen. Yeah. And your colleagues work is a great way for me to highlight this to you. Right. So technological DCS have a uh, technically qualified engineers, something to do with their engineers. And their um, yada, yada, yada. But this is an internal point. Do you see that? This isn't about the macro environment. This is about DCS. And so this is more to do with their, you have it, strengths and weaknesses, not opportunities and threats. So how many marks did they get, Owen, for that? Oh, my gosh, they got no marks for it. Do you see it? Do you see how this they could come out of the exam and think, oh, I had lots of several points and... Uh, OK, you get it. And if I could just uh, bring it uh, in, let me just see if we uh, if I can make that point again. Owen, if you could, please. Uh, oftentimes students write a point which is about a strength and weakness, an internal point. And I had another example there and uh, it was actually it's this one here um, legal. So there was several points here that were internal points. Do you see that? And that's terrible for this person because this person has started to write points and they think they've done a good answer and they can't get over it. The marks come out and they go, well, hold on a second. I, 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 I. No, you failed. Right. Why? Because your exam technique wasn't quite accurate enough and you were answering some a question close to the requirement, but not the requirement. Yeah. All right. That's enough for today, guys. I think you have it. Macro environment. Pestel is the tool, but there's definite things you need to do. Let's just remind ourselves you must use which two words? Do you have it? You do have it. What's the next word you must use after it? You must use the word you have it. And slanting your answer towards the professional skills, you have it. And making sure that you don't do internal points because they're, that's right, strengths and weaknesses. And macro environment, Pestel is about the opportunities and threats. All right. Thank you very much. Owen O'Reilly is my name and part of a series on SBL content. Thank you very much.